Hi, I'm Joe. I'm Melissa. I'm Uniki. And I'm Megan. We're a part of FIRST Robotics Team 1810. Today, we're going to teach you some of the basics of electrical wiring, such as soldering, tools of wiring, safety, PWMs, tinning, wiring methods, connectors, tips and tricks, along with how to set up the electrical board on your robot. First things first before we do anything, always remember to wear your safety glasses or goggles before you do anything in regards to electrical. What we're going to go over first is the various tools that you will use while soldering. We, here we have the soldering iron, the third arm. The third arm is not necessary, but is very useful and it can help in preventing injury in regards to burns, so we highly recommend it. Various gauges of wire, a heat gun, shrink wrap to be used with the heat gun, solder, a voltometer, uh, crimps and wire strippers, our crimp connectors, and a soldering gun, which will reach a higher heat than the soldering iron. Megan will now teach you the basics of soldering. Never inhale the fumes from solder as often it contains lead and this could be hazardous to your health. Many components of a robot will require soldering. A potentiometer is a good example of this. First she is going to split the wire in the three wires which are hooked connected together at first. She is then going to proceed to strip them. If you, you do not want your soldering iron to be touching the plastic on these wires for it will melt them and that is not safe or good. Be sure not to cut into the wire, only the insulation. Next, she will use her third arm to hold this. This will ensure that she has both hands free. It is basically a miniature alligator clamp of sorts that will hold the wire while she solders. Now she gets the excess solder from the last time she soldered off of her soldering iron and she places solder on the tip of the soldering iron at first to ensure that it will melt onto the wire correctly. She is now putting the solder on the end of the wire. This is called tinning the wire. We must do this in preparation to solder the wire to devices such as our potentiometer. Remember, always wipe off your soldering iron on the sponge, on a damp sponge, to ensure that it stays clean. Now remember, always put your soldering iron back in its holder once done using, if you're going to use it later, because if you do not, it could cause damage to your work surface, or it could cause injury if somebody is not aware that it is on. Now she is bending a hook at the end of the wire so that she can place it into the connectors on the potentiometer. Always remember to put the wires to the correct ports. If you do not know the voltage, then be sure to use a multimeter. Now she is going to solder the wire to the port where she is connecting to create a connection. Always be sure to cover the entire wire because you do not want two wires to accidentally touch and short your circuit. Be sure not to put too much solder because it might flow over onto the other connection causing problems such as shorts. Always remember when working with solder to always work in from the edge of the table, not too close to the edge, to avoid flow off, which could get on your carpet or on your skin and cause dangerous conditions. Always be sure to heat the terminal before applying solder. That way, the solder will flow better. She
She now wraps up her solder for easy storage. And the potentiometer is now wired. She will now go wash her hands because if you do not, it could lead to health conditions. Now, if you have made a mistake using solder, you, would, you will want to know how to desolder what you just did. This is what we will now go over. Keep in mind to never touch the desoldering wick because it will get very hot. This is my assistant, Alyssa, and she will be doing this for us. Now, a tip for using the desoldering wick is that you should spread it out like she is doing now so that it absorbs more solder while desoldering. For this, we'll use the soldering gun as opposed to the soldering iron. The reason so is because the soldering gun reaches higher te temperature levels and this will help us in desoldering. Now she is going to place the desoldering wick over top of the solder and press the soldering gun against it over top of the wick. She will steadily apply heat until the solder is absorbed into the wick and then she will move to a new section of the wick to continue desoldering. Use the same process as before, absorbing the solder into the wick, then moving on once it is fully absorbed. Keep in mind to touch it to the solder and not to the wire. Now that she's done, she will, uh, she will bend back the ends of the wire using her strippers. And by doing this, allow them to come out when she is ready. Now she grabs underneath and just pulls down and they come free. And that's how it's done. Megan will now be demonstrating crimping into various types of connectors. Now there are many different types of connectors and they are color coded by their size. The yellow gauge has 12 to 10 gauge wires. The blue can hold 16 to 14 gauge wires. And the reds hold 22 to 18 gauge wires. Now there are also different types of connectors to these different sizes. There is the ring connector. This is the largest of them the medium, and the small. Then there are the spade connectors. Largest, medium, and the smallest. Then there are the connectors for wires, which are called butt connectors. These are also done by that same color coding method. There are also blade connectors, which come in male and female. 
we use the female connectors to attach our spikes. Now we are going to show you how to connect your spike. We have pre-cut the right gauge wire for our connector. We are going to strip the insulation from it. She is going to tin the wire in order to improve the connection when she puts it through the connector. Now we will take the wire, push the soldered end through the connector. Now she will line up the crimping tool and the connector and then squeeze tight. This will complete the connection and then she can just push it on to the spike. Now we are moving on to Jaguars. Jaguars are the motor controllers of the robots we use. Now to do a Jaguar you must get the right type of wire, strip it, and then connect it to a, f a spade connector. Once you have the spade connector on the wire, you just crimp it like we did with the spikes wire. Notice how she presses the soldering iron to the metal first and then adds the solder. This will allow the solder to flow more smoothly across the wire. Now she unscrews the screws on the Jaguar. She does this so that she can place the spade connector underneath. She bends the spade connector so that it'll fit more snugly. Now she places it under and then screws the screw back down. Next we are doing PWMs. That stands for Pulse Width Modulator. We use PWMs on such devices as our Jaguar motor controllers, our digital sidecar, and our C-Rio. First, you will take the male PWM connectors out and bend them and snap them off. Next, you will take your wire Twist it. Keep in mind to have the end of the connector, which is going to be on your wire. Make sure that the connect that the end of the connector is going over the insulation slightly. Now she has crimped it, she will take the tips of our strippers, which are flat, and press it down to ensure that it stays on. She will repeat this process for all three of the wires. Now she will grab the casing, which holds our three PWM wires, and simply push them in. You should hear a click when it is in all the way.
That is how you complete a PWM. Now we are moving on to Cat5 connectors, which are used to establish a link to a computer or to the radio. You insert the Cat5 connector into its special crimper as so. If we were to actually crimp it, we would squeeze down right now. We will not though, because these are rather valuable and we'd rather not waste them. The special thing about crimping these is that you do not strip the wires that you put into these beforehand because when you press it down, the little slits in the Cat5 connector will let the crimper push down and cut into the insulation. This is our robot from the 2011 season. You are looking at the electrical board. On the electrical board, what we did is we laid things out in close proximity to things that it would make sense for them to be near. For instance, the battery has to connect to the power distribution board. So therefore, we put them next to each other. Our Jaguars must go to the motors underneath. On our robot, we have these wire trays to make it neater so that our wires don't get all jumbled up and where they're not supposed to be. The cover comes off so that we can see where the wires are going inside. Our battery goes to the power distribution board through six gauge wire. The positive of our battery, which is red, goes through the main circuit breaker, then to the power distribution board. The negative of our battery, which is black, goes directly to the power distribution board. Power goes through circuit breakers and out to various components. Be sure to use the right size of breakers and wires. We use 12 gauge and 40 amp circuit breakers for our Jaguars. For our spikes, we use 18 gauge and 20 amp breakers. Our Jaguars control the motors, as well as our spikes. The power distribution board powers the C-Rio through the 24 volt source. The 12 volt connection goes through our converter, changing it to a lower voltage to power our radio. On our robot, the input black equals negative, red equals positive. Going out of the converter, black equals negative, yellow equals positive. Make sure when wiring this that the center is positive and that the shield is negative. You may have noticed that each of our wires has a number labeled onto them. Each end of the wires shares a unique number. This reduces the chance of miswiring. Our digital sidecar has relay slots, digital input and output spots, and PWM spots. This controls all of our motor controllers. The digital sidecar connects to a card number four on our C Rio. Our analog breakout connects to card number one. This would control our camera. Those are the basics of the electrical board on our robot. We hope that this will help you in wiring your robot.